It's a bit of a pity because it is a very, very delicate subject, but a very important subject that tends to get shoved under the carpet. So I, I make a big point about explaining why we look at risk. So we'll discuss that obviously in more detail as we go through. <music> Hi, and welcome to The Corporate Show, episode 10, with myself, Manjeet Nija. Thank you for joining me again. So as you know, over the past few weeks, we've been talking to various different trainers from different backgrounds, talking about what inspires them, the subject that they're an expert on. So we've done project management, we've done service management, we've done how the world is changing for a training perspective. We've actually also done, as you remember from episode six, um, we did run mental and, and well-being training as well, which is really important. So this week, uh, we're actually going to talk about risk management and how that's really important. There is a whole course, believe it or not, on risk. I personally haven't done it. I've worked elements of risk management in the service management side of things that I provide training on on a day-to-day -day basis, and also from real-world perspectives when I was out there earning a, earning a penny, as they say. Now I do what I love, so I'm, I'm very lucky to do that. So there is somebody who knows a lot more about it than I do, and that's a friend of mine called Anthony. You may have seen him before. He's got his own YouTube channel. He'll tell you a little bit about that a little bit later. In the meantime, Anthony, welcome, and thank you for coming. Hi, Manjeet. Good to see you again, and thanks for the invite, actually. It's been a long time since we've uh, had a, chat to, a chance to chat, way back in Lehman Street, I guess, I think. Yeah, it was a while since we met face to face. We had a lot of conversations on WhatsApp <laughs> and phone calls and, and so on. So um, what I wanted to ask you, um, how did you get into risk management? What is it about risk management that you like? It's a very interesting subject, actually, because we, we handle risk domestically as well as in business. And uh, I've been working in project environments and you know, business change initiatives for, for many, many years. And of course, uh, one of the underlying elements about delivering change is that it is uh, in itself an uncertainty. It's one of the characteristics of projects anyway. And this was very, very interesting. Uh, ironically, I do remember many years ago being on a, a project which they were having some problems with. Uh, and one of their excuses was, well, Anthony, you weren't doing anything with your risk management and your risk charter. And I'm thinking, well, that's very strange because that's usually right up my street. And it's a bit of a pity because it is a very, very um, delicate subject, but a very important subject that tends to get shoved under the carpet. So I, I make a big point about explaining why we look at risk. So we'll discuss that obviously in more detail as we go through. Yeah, I mean, it, it is because some, as soon as you mention the word risk, either people start yawning, <laughs> roll their eyes. <laughs> or run away. Yeah. What is it? Like, why risk? Risk actually very, very you can most people see risk as a negative, but I tend to see it more as a as a positive and getting a more balanced view on something. I mean, what's your view on risk? Well, exactly that. And I think the irony is, as I started to as I started to allude a moment ago, is that uh, we deal with risk all the time domestically in, in our normal lives for various reasons. You know, a lot of the time it's instinctive, we're, we're assessing whatever we're doing with the risk in the background, looking at what that impact might be and how likely is it to happen. Well, I prefer the word probability. But for some reason, when it comes to leading change and looking at risk in change, um, I, I think it, it's this sort of negative view that it has a, a negative impact, as you said, on what we are doing. And a lot of PMs in particular are very concerned about that because they're obviously driven to deliver the change and, and they don't like to have to deal with things like risk. And so often it's done very cursory. Uh, they pick up the standard things and then it's shoved under the carpet, which is in itself, ironically, a very dangerous and risky thing to go and do. <laughs> so what is the actual definition of risk then? I mean, we, first of all, let me, let me start again. So first of all, which particular, because there's so many different elements of risk, so which yes. uh, framework of risk do you actually provide training on? And secondly, what is the actual definition of risk? Because there's so many different definitions. No, definitely. Uh, well, my, my area of, of training and expertise is around the management of risk 
from the broader perspective. That's looking strategically at the corporate level, uh, portfolio level, if you like, right down through program and project change and then into, um, into delivery bits, but also into operational uh, risk because there is a differential between them. So operational risk and project risk tend to come under the umbrella in a similar way, at a similar level, I should say, uh, under strategic portfolio risk, because portfolio strategies cover both environments, operational environment, as well as you know, the project and program change environment. Okay, so I do with all that. Now, obviously, in some particular, um, frameworks like Prince2 and Agile PM, for example, because they're on a similar footing in many ways. Uh, there is risk around project risk. Now, this is the one that's really quite critical because like in your daily life, if you're looking to do something for a particular initiative, book a holiday, which has an impact this year because of the current circumstances we have. Yeah, I need uh, to do this year, definitely. Yeah, well, absolutely right. You see, when you book it last year, you weren't expecting that type of situation to arise. Uh, and the funny thing is that um, we, we tend to we tend to just evaluate risk in that particular way. But you know, when it comes to projects, it, it's quite key. It's about from project perspective, it's about achieving the objective. And remember, as you rightly pointed out, risks are both opportunities as well as threats. We always tend to think from the threat perspective only. So to go back in, and to your second part or the other part of your question, what is risk? You know, the first thing is risk that something that may happen, there is a risk that something may happen in the future, i.e. the uncertainty, and in the future, right, therefore gives us a bit of a window of opportunity to do something about it. But the point is, that it's because it's something that may happen, what is that going to do to my particular initiative, both from a positive and a negative perspective? Now, I put it in a very general framework about that, but that's, that's the core of what risk is. Uh, an event or something that may happen in the future, which is a very important point, that may happen, but it gives us an opportunity to do something about it now, right, one mm -hmm. form or another. And the whole point about risk management is understanding all that, what we can do and putting the procedures in place to help us to, you know, to tackle it. So that's really interesting because it actually ties in with a lot of the stuff that I do, as you know, you know, I'm service management. Yes. And also it ties in with lean management as well, lean six sigma, with um, identifying what the risks may be, having EWIs or early warning indicators. It's the same yeah. thing, it's monitoring it, isn't it, along the way? Yes. And ironically, from well, interestingly enough, I shouldn't say ironically, but interestingly enough, from a service management perspective, uh, you are considering both the change that's going ahead right especially if it's a lot of internal changes so we're looking at the risk with the with the project or the initiative itself uh, and, and i say project but i use i tend to use the phrase business change initiatives because projects are a controlled framework to deliver a specific change because they need governance and other controls in place but we get a lot of change going on operationally through frameworks like scrum uh, and uh, other areas that um, other types of frameworks that also have elements of risk operationally. That's why I mentioned earlier on the MRR, the management of risk, looks at the broader framework. So we have those two areas. So that's where service management is very much intertwined with us because we're looking at the change we're delivering and the risk involved in that. And we're looking at the change once it's delivered and any risks that go after that that are also likely to be. Uh, to, to be materializing within operations, which service management needs to keep a track on as they update systems, as they put in processes in place. So it's absolutely vital that risk is an ongoing organizational approach, not just in projects. Yeah, that's really important. It has to start at the top. So it's a whole of the enterprise that has to be behind it. And it's gotta be something that's kind of built in the values and the ethos of, of the organization itself into the enterprise. Absolutely, um, yeah. So what value would, if I um, had a huge organization or whatever, even like four or five people in my organization, if I wanted to send them on the MOR course, what value um, would it deliver to me, to my organization? Uh, a lot of value actually, because it will give a better understanding on the way we need to tackle risk 
from a point of identifying it and then going through the, that, that procedure on, on handling and managing the risk. You always say, you know, we manage risk because we can do this is the point about if we have an opportunity, a window of opportunity, we can manage the risk in some form or another, which means putting a plan in place, basically, or a response. Okay. And because of this, it, it helps understand how we are likely to or not likely to achieve the, the objectives at the project or even program level, but also look at the overall change we're putting in place operationally and therefore going back to the strategic level. Because some changes may not look, seem themselves uh, risky to do, but we still need to understand this, this strategic risk that may be in place by delivering, you know, like a new product in place. So running the project, delivering a new product, maybe a new, you know, Nintendo game is quite straightforward. But what's going to be the impact strategically? Is that the right direction? What's the impact on reputation, which is absolutely vital? And often these things aren't taken into consideration financially, on, on, our, on our employment, uh, on the internal. So when we look at analyzing the business, we need to understand the internal mechanisms of the business. And we have mecha, mecha, uh, uh, an acronyms like most, the mission objectives, strategies, and tactics. We look at resource audits. And all these are all part of it. And they're also linked, therefore, directly to service management because we look at, look at operationally, and how is the organization, organization going to go from here forward and, you know, be sustainable, which is the other key element of it, really. And that all yeah. ties in. Yeah. It, is, it does tie in. You're right. It does all tie in together. And I think it's now becoming more and more apparent. Uh, at least that's my understanding of it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it's now becoming more and more apparent how important it is for people in projects who are looking at risk to involve the service management aspect, but also there's a lot of onus on the service management aspect as well. You kind of go knocking on, the, on those doors as well to say, have you looked at risk from our perspective once the service has actually gone live or the product has gone live? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is one of, the, one of the risks we have, again, coincidentally, because we of working in silos. I mean, when we look at an organization, uh, I, I do I have put a small video to explain that the organization is made up of a number of environments. The key environment is operational, where we make the bread and butter, where we run the business, basically, as, uh, as managing programs looks at. And then we have the change environment, primarily under projects and programs, that will make those changes. But at the end of the day, the whole organization has to work together. And if we're looking at the us and them type thing, either silos, uh, and we're all trying to deal with those, those different elements, then there's a massive risk involved in all doing that and the way we work as well. And this gets missed off quite, quite enormously and quite dangerously that we don't see how that interaction is. And therefore, the way we don't work together collaboratively, if you like to use that term, has a massive impact on the way the organization can keep going forward and keep sustainable. And this is a major risk. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And this is one of the reasons why I started up you know, my YouTube channel was to bring together the different frameworks and people can see how actually, because I talk a lot about service matter and you know that that's what I love to talk about. Yeah, and that's exactly, what I've yeah. my training on. And, you know, I've got idle all the way through, or service management all the way through me. So, you know, the fact that we're all doing this and the trainers have been really forthcoming with the information to try and bring together the two worlds, to try and break down those silos. And it, there's more value in all of us actually working together. No, I totally agree. And of course, a lot of this is underpinned by using things like change management. In other words, getting the transformation changes into operational life and working with service management. And at the end of the day, because we're all part of the same organization, there is an overlap. And this is one of the other interesting uh, aspects of characteristics of change, project change in particular, is the cross-functional bit where we've got people who are part of our projects who they're normal working life is an operational life because these are the users or the people who are understanding the vision, the change itself. Uh, and quite often, it's because we're changing the way the organization works and uh, the processes and the functions in there, which are part of the service management environment, then you've got to work together because quite often the change will come from them in the first place. And this is what I explained in that, in that video. The change yeah. will initially come from those environments we need to do things better. We need to be more slick, more, you know, economical, efficient, uh, et cetera. 
Uh, and so we need to work together. Yeah, absolutely. So um, from an individual perspective, I come on one of your training courses and first of all, how long is it? Um, B, what's the exam structure? And C, apart from the certification, how is it going to help me? Right, good, good question. Thanks for asking. So the course is usually five days long. Uh, after the third day, you'll be sitting a foundation exam, which goes through a series of fundamental questions just to see you've got the, the main framework. And then you, you finish off the course with a two and a half hour objective based exam on a case study, looking at risk management within a, a, a case itself to see that you've understood how to apply it. So on my courses, you'll be, under, you'll be given the understanding of what risk is about, what risk management is about, uh, why we need it, and then alongside that, I'll explain how it works and then how to use it, because how it works is one thing, but how to apply it is something else. Uh, and that's really quite important because you can get the framework, but when you go back to the organization, if you haven't understood what it means to me, my organization, and how can I get that in and get the buy-in from the senior members of the organization, who have probably sent you there in the first place, but hopefully they know why, then... Um, then you'll get the real benefit of being on the course for, for, for the whole time there. So we get a lot of examples explaining risk and how we handle risk and just look at the way we need to identify. And really, at the end of the day, what we, what we really want to do is to get people to understand that this isn't something to run away from. We need to embrace it and, and take it on board because, as I say, without it or don't do it properly, that's a bigger risk than doing it properly, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, if, if you take into account our considered, uh, sorry, our, um, what's going on at the moment with COVID-19, our current situation, you know, there's a lot of risks going on there, a lot of risk management going on. Some of it, we would probably say questionable. <laughs> we're not <laughs> behind the scenes. No like, comment. <laughs> exactly. We're not behind the scenes knowing exactly what's going on. So, you know, reserve judgment on that. But there is a lot of risk management going on there. So what are your actually the courses that you deliver? I know you deliver many other courses as well, but from the risk management perspective, it's really important that people understand it can go from something you're doing at home, like you said, to going on a holiday, buying a car, buying a house, even choosing the university that your children are going to go to. You know, there's an element of risk management in that, to running your own business, to enterprises, multi-billion pound organizations and so on. Risk management is over everything, like a rash, as I like to say. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's why I started off saying, you know, it, it's both domestic and, and in the business environment. And, and that was where the funny situation is, because domestically, we're handling all the time sort of instinctively, and it's just part of our lives. You know, we drive out, of, out in, the, in the road, it's, we, we take a risk, we go walking on the, on the road, we take a risk, or, you know, down the pavement, go shopping, especially at the moment. Um, but yes, we deal with it all the time. So why is it when we get into business, we, we tend to treat it like a hot potato and run a mile and sort of say, well, I've done my risk management, shove it in the, uh, in the drawer there, um, which they do with business cases too, by the way, uh, because it is an ongoing document. It's something every time we're planning something, we need to consider, have I changed anything that could pose a positive or negative risk to, to what's going to come up ahead in front? Because remember, what is risk really? Risk is a potential issue, right? But there's a massive difference, well, a couple of massive differences. One is, as I said earlier, it's uncertain. It may not be happening, or it may happen in the future, and the fact that it is in the future, whereas an issue is coming and hitting you in the face right now, or about 100% about to do that. So you can, you've got opportunity from a window opportunity to manage the risk and do something, or in the case of an issue, we can only respond. We can only I mean, react to issues. Yeah, and I think that's that's a key point to understand. You know, we see red, and we uh, sorry, we see the word risk. We automatically see red. We see warning flags and signals and flashing lights and all the rest yeah. of it. It doesn't. It's not that way at all. You know, no. you've got to change your perspective on it. On which is where somebody coming on your one of your training courses um, would really benefit from learning from that as well, and your organisation who send you there, who send people there. So Anthony, unfortunately, as is always every week with all of these, we run out of <laughs> time quite imagine, quickly. Yeah. I know we can, and I say this every week, we could talk for hours on each subject that we're talking about each week. So um, how can people actually get hold of you? 
how can they get hold of you and maybe find out more about what you do and specifically in regards to risk management? So I, I front up a, um, initiative called the Sustainable PM. So there is a website actually all one word called the sustainable PM.com. Uh, but more interestingly, there is a YouTube channel with the same name, uh, where I have posted a number of video, about hundred odd videos, actually, of which risk is, is one or two of them where I explain risk is a bigger picture, uh, and, and also the more detail. But there are other videos around most of the work I tend to do and actually show you my style of delivery, which is something I've developed for a number of years. Um, it's quite unique. It's quite unique, your style of delivery. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I hope it works too. It does, does seem to go quite well, actually. In fact, DAPS at the moment, having to work from home very well, actually. Um, so they're the two main areas. Obviously, you can pin me on LinkedIn if you wish to. I tend to not to go there too often these days, really. Uh, but they're the two main channels. I also post some blogs on um, a, a, um, a site called pmtips.net. So that's project management tips, but just called pmtips.net. I have a few um, articles on there as well, as well as my own articles. So uh, you, can, you can catch me up in a few places, actually. Okay, that's brilliant. So it's lots of different options for people to get hold of you. So thank you again for taking the time out and coming and, and having this little chat with us. Thank you to everybody who's been watching. And remember to like and subscribe if you want to see what else is coming up and also to share. Um, somebody else may benefit from what we've actually been talking about. And if you hit the bell icon, then you'll get notifications of when the next episode's coming up. So thank you very much again for joining me on The Corporate Show with me, Manjit Niji, your host. And I will see you next week.